So for today's topo study, I wanted to break a few rules and also use a more kind of advanced case study to show how it would approach a more complex situation. So with our complex cube on screen, we're just going to press Q, go under Mesh Tools, and turn it into a sphere. And pressing numpad 1 to look at it from front, we can then press numpad 7 to look at it from top, and I'm just going to shift E and bring out the sphere onto Y, and we'll scale it down after duplicating it and just perform a difference. In previous examples, I realized that setting up exact as my Boolean solver for this would actually make things slower as we continue working. So for that reason, we're just going to change it over to exact in the F9 or change it over to fast. And let's also shift click sharpen to activate auto smooth. From here, I'm just going to shift A, add a cylinder, and we can just use the F9 in order to align this to view. We could also use box cutter, but however we choose to do it. And this is a 32 round cylinder, meaning it's gonna be a fun solve, you guys. And we'll select both of these and perform a union. And from here, we'll just enable dots, press D, switch over to circle and box cutter. Also notice that I'm using a 32 round circle. So I'm also testing Blender 3.0, I believe, which means that reverse bevel is gonna be a little weird in this particular demonstration. And let's confirm that. So I'm just going to add a reverse bevel real quick and press spacebar and we see that we lost the reverse bevel. So I'm just going to bring it back, select the top phase, control G to add a new group. And we could just go to the second bevel modifier and just reassign its group and we're good to go. So that bug should be getting cleared out. Another thing is I want to demonstrate the ability to move a modifier up the stack using the scrolling. So I'm going to cut this entire area off, flattening it out. And that resulted in us cutting away more than we wanted. So I'm going to press Q, go to Everscroll to recall the shape. And by holding Shift and rolling the wheel, we're actually moving this up the stack. And we can actually cut as early in the stack as we want, but we actually just want to cut before the cylinder so we get this as our result. All right, so here we are with our shape, but it still is somewhat basic. Let's add a little bit of complexity. So I'm going to grab box, select our shape first. And using snap dots, we're just going to jump off the most center snap dot and just create a cut and extrude that back. And we'll press Alt X in order to switch over to mirror with X. And then we can just mirror that over. We'll select the shape Alt X, also mirror it on the Z. And let's press Alt V E in order to get our EV shading to look a little bit better. And this is the shape that we'll be solving today. In fact, if we want to add a little bit extra fun to talk about extending this video, let us just draw a box cut here, use line box in that case to get this as our result. So now we're ready to begin. So if we press Alt V, this is what our geometry looks like. Boolean geometries will give Boolean results always. But let us take this and shift click Smart Apply in order to make a clone. And we're just gonna bring it over to the side so we have a clone with all the modifiers applied that we can play with. And I'm just gonna take it in local mode so that way we don't have to deal with anything else. And so. We see that while this is a good flow for a sphere, it's not a good flow for the cuts that we have in place. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of flow redirection in order to protect our most important boundaries. But also we have this fun area on the inside that we have to deal with. So this area is so far so good. However, we're gonna have to make some hard decisions here. So I'm gonna just grab these two points, select this point, merge with M at last giving us this and with this one I'm actually going to first save it because I don't want any weirdness and let's just save it and shift click mark and I'm going to press M to jump to merge and we're just going to click and drag this point in order to gravitate click and drag to gravitate and I'm just merging these areas holding shift in order to perform a knife cut across these areas just to facilitate in their solving for this. We'll be going through this and then doubling back through this to get a slightly better solution, but we just want something just protecting our main perimeter for now, and then we can address the damage just being done around it. So click and drag to gravitate, holding shift, and then clicking a point in order to form a connection. And then we're just merging these out a little oversimplification could be helpful, but too much will start compromising areas of the curvature, which is probably already happening in this area. So 
That one is a really hard decision. We're just going to merge these two here, take this one to its nearest destination for the loop that we intend to protect. Click and drag on the vert that matters to consolidate everything into it. We'll bring this one here, make a connection there, make a connection here, merge these two. Let's merge everything at this point twice and then bring it to this area. We'll do a shift to form a connection, click and drag, and from here, let's just make them connect here. Shift click to form the connection. And just forming more connections and determining what should be connected and what shouldn't. We could also hold control and slide things around in case we want to facilitate with how we're solving. So the next part where I actually exit out and we start correcting things manually isn't even required, but I like to press spacebar to exit at certain points in order to just definitely register the state and ensure that I'm not going to lose my progress. However, we do also have the ability to register undo states within the tool if you wanted to really lock down that state as an undo state for control Z, but such things are experimental and definitely aren't always required, especially in lieu of what I'm discussing right now. So all we're doing is just merging things at last and then just consolidating these points, which will come back to haunt us. But the goal is to protect our flow that we're, we have going on. Since we're in vanilla, I'm just having the GG merge. My old friend, I love GG merge. Just select these two, merge at last, grab that. And so basically we have forced this flow almost entirely around. So now it comes to us making some hard decisions with this area. So I'm going to bring this area here and merge at last here, but we see that there's a couple of points here. So let's select M last, last again, and let's get rid of this. And we're really compromising the curvature of this area. I'm hoping it doesn't come back to haunt us, but sometimes Hard decisions have to be made for topology. So Mesh Machine's still taking over my edit mode right now, so let's just choose this side and choose that side, and you know, it's growing on me. You know, if I use too much um, Mesh Machine symmetrize, I'm gonna be making our mirror gestural. So after jumping in Select Tool, I'm just gonna press B in order to protect this boundary proper. And instead of having all this extra loopage build up, we're just going to turn on vert mer Verti Mergy and GG Slide. GG slide, and we're just sliding at our new flow with our old flow to just begin consolidating. And we're already down past the threshold, so that means we can just use Mesh Machine. And we could also just not even deal with all this merge business and actually split the mesh proper, so that way we're actually solving what matters, which is only this area. But Sometimes I just like to keep it all real for a moment just so things retain their circularness. So let's actually apply this so we're back to where we were with all the mesh being real because I don't want to interfere with what I'm about to show. So for example, let's let's deal with this area. Right now you see that it's two very large ingons. Let's just press Control T and then Alt J. Done. Let's select this area. Control T. Alt J done and control T will turn things into triangles and Alt J will turn them into quads. And because of the geometry flows that are happening and how they perfectly meet with each other with the same vertex counts, we could just press control T Alt J and just quickly turn this back into quads, giving us basically a much better looking shape here. The other thing is that I want to probably put some loops to begin protecting the cylinder because to solve for this, we're going to be compromising some flows and some directions. So that's why I always have loops kind of leading up to an area because prior to making such serious changes, it's always good to have something protecting that so the damage doesn't actually go too far. So we're just grabbing and connecting and this area leads us to have to make a hard decision. We actually offer some loopage in the connection with the other side. So 
However we solve this, we need to actually preserve what we have going. So I'm going to just add a loop and then bring it back around and we can press M and merge. And basically we've protected this area by throwing in a redirect. So we could always add additional loops there if we wanted to crease it up even more, but really that's the whole purpose of it. And because it's real, that means we could use mesh machine some more, which I just have fun doing now. Shout out to mesh machine. If we press control R to add a loop, we see that the loop doesn't actually flow all the way around. So for a brief moment, it looked like victory, but obviously victory doesn't look like this where everything's not connected. So how do we deal with this? We have one loop on this side or yeah, we have one loop on this side. We have two loops we got to bring in and make connect in order to form a perfect quad area. I'm going to select this and press I to inset which will bring this situation we have to solve in just a little bit more. And we could delete this face. Well, we don't have to delete the face. Let's add a loop here and slide it. I'm just kind of thinking on the fly. You know, when I'm not recording videos, I'm often playing Tetris. I love Tetris. Like I'm really obsessed with Tetris. I get mad when Tetris games aren't made right. Like when they put Puyos in it. Puyos are the biggest cheaters in Tetris. They just throw down so many blocks so many so fast on the Tetris side. It's totally unbalanced. And this solution could work, but I don't know if I like it. And let's undo that solution and really think about how we want to solve this because we also have a bad solution happening in this area too that I'm not the biggest fan of. So I'm going to just come all the way across and make this connection. And then for this area, we're just going to place an edge here. And that means that I can just add a loop here and convert this into a diamond quad. So while the flow isn't ab absolutely perfect, it does solve this area into quads. So just wanted to give viewers a moment to think about it while I also rack my brain thinking of possible solutions for that particular area. But if we just, begin mergey mergey jumping across you know with mesh machine we can begin looking at our shape and it's looking pretty good however this area is definitely going to be a journey so let's simplify this journey by just forcing a flow with knife tool and we'll just go back and recover the damage so maybe something like that you know in fact let's make it to our destination. And now we actually have a satisfactory result, at least for starting. So I'm gonna save my file just in case things get weird. And we're gonna press M to go into merge and begin just merging some areas, but not too hard. You drag it too hard, it's gonna get a little crazy on the merge. Sometimes it's better to manually select elements and do a connection like you see me doing. And with every piece here, it plays a role as far as holding the curvature. So choosing which ones you want to sacrifice and which ones you actually want to keep is, is an important decision that shouldn't be taken lightly. One wrong decision and we end up with fastening on the model. So let's just slide these things around, bring this connection down, bring this piece over and let's press spacebar and select both of these and dissolve them. So we almost have an entire flow going and this piece looks a little redundant, but I'm pretty sure it's important for the curvature in this area. So if we look at this, this is what we're looking at so far. And for some reason it just ends here. And that's because there's one vert that needs to be dissolved. And now we have a flow going all the way across. So the same trick I showed before where you could press control T alt J to convert. We see that it didn't work out in this case, or it did work out, but there's some unaddressed things that we have to deal with. For example, this loop is a little bit of a strange one. Let's dissolve that edge, which means I can now select this loop and dissolve it as well. And let's say we did want this to be all quads, you know, whenever it comes to topologizing or um, resolving difficult meshes, it's, it's a matter of what do I want to be a quad by my own hand? And what do I want to uh, become a quad by applying one level of subdivision? Or even what do I want to solve using a triangle and then deal with the um, rest of it being a quad? Some areas are so important that they're best as quads. 
but some areas can survive also as triangles with triangles serving the purpose of being a loop terminator because you don't always want a loop that flows endlessly sometimes you want a loop to have a definitive ending and that's where triangles definitely come in come into the picture for me so i'm just sliding geometry doing a little bit of consolidation every now and then because i still have verde mergey on and this last area what are we going to do with that well i am going to make a let's just select this edge right click subdivide why did i subdivide it so i can add a partial loop that ends here and we can make that connection make this connection dissolve this loop and now we have all that we desire with this particular area at the expense of one additional loop. Sometimes adding extra loops on an area that doesn't contribute to the curvature can result in you having lumps in the subdivision, but we're just gonna run that gauntlet today. So now for solving the top, we haven't really sent any loops from underneath going up, so let's do that. Let's make connections with this area. You know, all these near misses just mean that by connecting them to the nearest corner, we have a flow that's actually going around this area. So things are looking pretty good. Let's select this, select these two, pressing J to form a connection in between them. And we see that we have maybe one loop too many. So how do we want to, so actually we don't. We could grab this and this, make the connection and we don't want to slide this, you know, the um, OCD of me tells me I want to slide this and make it very even, but this stuff is part of the form and it's also contributing to the curvature of other forms. And so making such a decision may not be in our best interest, but adding a loop to protect this area, adding a loop to protect this area, like it's a strategy game, is going to work out in our favor. And we'll select this piece, this piece, J to connect, which means we can add a loop here. And J to connect, we can add a loop here. And J to connect. And notice that I'm getting pretty lazy with my loopage here. It's because as far as the solution goes, we're gonna let subdivision handle all the work. But for now, we just want to just merge and be done. So, and also keep the solution feasible because if we get too overcomplicated with an area, it's just going to result in very dense geometry. This area, I just don't like it. Let's remove it and let's try something else. Maybe a single try and to turn it into a quad, but when you have two tries, you can always just diamond quad it. So that's why I don't really um, panic whenever I see a triangle. It could be worse in terms of subdivision. It could be an end gone. So let's see how we're doing on this model. Let's press Alt V. I see that this video is running a little long, so I'm gonna accelerate to the ending. And the mesh actually came out looking all right, all right. We got this curvature happening here, and I'm just looking at it, deciding if I wanna say, yeah, guys, I meant to do that, or we probably wanna sharpen that up. We could sharpen it up by adding additional loops. In fact, because we have this flow, we also have the ability to control it. So, I mean, that's where topology comes in, is giving yourself the ability to control the amount of tightness that you have with an area because you can just simply go in and add a loop. But this loop is so tight on this other side that it's hurting it. So let's slide it back and let's slide this in, giving us this as a result and keeping that area around. But really, let's just get rid of that loop. It looks good enough the way it is. Let's turn off subdivision display for edit mode because we're not done. We still need to select this edge and this edge and this edge, all of these edges. And let's just, um, let's press control B and let's roll the wheel for one segment and then press P to set our profile to one and then click to apply. Sometimes it's just fun to do it the blender way. We'll just put a loop here slide this one away because we do want it rounded, but we don't want it too rounded. So that's why we have the double loops. And so for this, let's just press X and delete this. Control F, grid fill. And looking at it from front view, we just want to rotate it so we have a nice frontal facing solution. And if we press Alt V and we look at our wireframe, this is our solution so far with the mesh. So 
A big thing for me is I do not like having end guns or uh, not end guns uh, poles happening on my mesh whenever it comes to important loops. So we're just going to try dissolving that, which leaves us with just one. I'm going to slide this over and then merge it last, which will offset that pole to be somewhere else because I just don't want it on my loop making me look bad. You know, that's going to make me look like a uh, beginner. So let's just select this geometry and we'll just slide it down. You know, really breaking some rules here, but we want this geometry to look a little smooth. GG. Let's press escape. You know, box cutter in edit mode starting is something I'm always pondering how we can solve. But really, if you're in edit mode with box cutter, you intend to use box cutter. But we've noticed that, you know, box cutter tends to just be on 24 seven with us. So it is something that I'm pondering a solution for that doesn't completely rock the boat, but I'm definitely aware of blue box popping up in edit mode. Just one of those things. So we're just sliding around geo, just having us a chat. And this is what we changed it to. And this is what it was. So obviously the um, second solution is going to look better. So let's merge it on the X and then on the Y. I'm just doing it manually because I'm a weirdo. Let's put one loop, two loop here and that's it. We've now turned this into a subdivision friendly mesh. If we press Alt V and we come out of wireframe, we see that this shape is looking pretty good. In fact, let's go back to our initial shape that we created that was built up out of all these modifiers. And let's shift click on Smart Apply, duplicate this off to the side, and we're going to press N, jump to my Q tab, which is Quad Remesher and ready to be impressed. No, just kidding. But seriously, every time I click quad remesher, it impresses me. In fact, this time it has impressed me, sort of. Um, we need to help quad remesher out. Before I start talking smack, we see that we didn't mark any sharp edges. So I'm just gonna use Q and sharpen to mark the edges. And by unchecking that and checking use normal splitting, we can now give quad remesher a fair shot. And now we see that the solution looks much better. For a brief second, I was, I was like, I'm almost impressed except for how this area was looking. But now we see that my work was done in about 30 seconds. So let's slap a level of subdivision on it and press Alt V to go into wireframe. And we see that the sharp edge is kind of getting away. So let's go into edit mode and press Control E to clear sharp markings. And we see that this is our result. So auto smooth also being on is going to affect our ability to see this looking good. So we'll toggle that off as well. So we're looking at what it looks like solved by hand, what it's like solved by machine. And really we could make the machine solution look a lot better. You know, who knows what quad remesher is actually going for. So I'm just going to shift D duplicate this up and we're going to turn off uh, show subdivision display in edit mode because I don't play that. And we're just going to slide some loops at some other loops. Maybe not too tight. We don't want to make it too tight, but just enough. And the fact that we can select and grab these loops to slide them, like I said before, is a testament to how good of a topological solution it is. Second I say that, I grab a terrible loop. I grab a terror loop. Let's try that again. Yeah, something like that, a terror loop. So I don't know what else to call it. We'll just GG slide this, GG slide this, add a loop here, add a loop here, add a loop here, add a loop here. If there's a loop nearby, I'm going to just slide it. And we're looking at something like that. Although we do want to make sure auto smooth is off just for the purposes of this. And we're getting some pretty good looking results. However, this part could definitely look a little better. And let's look at what we have. And because of our geometry, we see that this area is getting compromised. It's something round. So we're going to need to add an edge of reinforcement to this area, giving us something like that. And if we slide some loops away, we can really relax this and get something a lot more rounded. But you know, without a flow going all the way around that, that part is going to be a little bit of a new nuisance. So we could actually give this whole area a flow if we wanted. You know, this is the extended talk now. If you came just to watch me model that part, you can leave now.
but whenever it comes to topology and adding loops, we can actually force a flow by just selecting all these loops and just choosing subdivide. And now there's a flow happening in this particular area. And we could just slide things at these other things, maybe take these and slide them away a bit just to relax it. Giving us something like that as a result. But when we solve like that, we actually do need to go back and resolve for quads, which is just going to be a whole other discussion, especially for us talking with this machine made mesh. Let's mirror that two to Z. And this is our result after getting in and just adding some loops and kind of tightening things up. So another thing is this area, this area could also be tightened up. However, this loop is so far away that if we slid it, we would compromise a portion of the form. So this would definitely be one of those areas I would personally want to have a loop subdivided into. And then I would just work the geometry around it to be able to take such a thing. And there's box cutters, um, knife getting in my way again, all because I'm being lazy and I'm clicking and dragging. So let's right click subdivide and we've add, added this loop in and let's just slide it in. And we see that now this area is a lot more contained, even though we've basically introduced some ingons to this area. So if we wanted to solve it proper, I would grab this loop, press control B to bevel, which will then turn this entire area into a quad. We can tell because there's a loop that's able to flow along here, but looks like our geometry isn't completely connected just yet. So here we are helping out quad remesher in a big way today. You know, look at me, an old friend of the machines. So what is going on here? I'm wondering if we got part, part of a bad solution happening with quad remesher and that's what we're looking at, but I am doubtful. In fact, let's grab all of this geo, dissolve it, which simplifies this to be just this. Sometimes when in doubt, simplifying is the way to go. And if we look at this, it's almost suitable, except we need to make some big connections in here because just trying to micromanage solve this particular area is going to be our downfall and make us create lumps in this. What they gave us was a perfect mesh. What we gave them back were lumps because the mesh was just too rounded. But this area is just going to be a bit of a topological conundrum, but we can at least solve it to something suitable like that. I mean, who's really going to be looking all up in my sphere like this? All right, let's alt X, take it to the other side and really just tore that thing up on the inside, all for us to turn this area back into a quad after we try to space some geo in here. So, how do we want to solve this? We could add a loop in the middle and connect, call it a day. And this time I'm going to use modifier apply to just mirror this in the quickest way, ignore the shading. And we see that this is our result now. So sorry about getting so sidetracked with that mesh. Sometimes it's just a little fun to get in and play with um, refining the solutions that quad remesher gives, but with that, we've now went in and discussed the process of basically recorrecting the geometry for such a shape based on this initial mesh, which gave us this with quadri mesher, which we then corrected to this. And let's take one last look at that area of contention, just to look at it and be haunted by it. I am going to go in edit mode and make some more connections. You know, I, I just get in over my head. I know I can solve this. But over solving is a danger. So notice that as soon as I start removing things, that's when it actually looks proper. I mean, we ended up mitigating our area to this. So we probably don't want to do that. We probably want to keep it actually away from our loop. Otherwise we're going to create some questionable geometry, but let's just have this in the middle. Maybe we can just double the trouble and maybe something like that is just a little bit better. We'll just have to live with it and let's just choose the side we want to keep. 
and I'm going to be wondering why that looks like that all day with modifier apply. Sometimes wire display just works against you, but that definitely looks a little bit better. So with that, I can wrap up this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.